Good evening. This is our Tuesday Night Lupus Club, and our speaker tonight is Alicia Griffith from GSK, and she's going to talk to us about managing sun safety with your lupus so that we can all have a healthy and safe summer. Alicia? Thank you, Tracy, and welcome to everyone. I see a few new faces on tonight, Tracy. That's exciting. Yes. Um, to have a few new face, faces. So I'll give a shout out to everyone. Um, thank you for, for coming and joining us tonight. As Tracy says, my partner in crime, uh, we uh, are working together quite a bit to try to raise awareness in the community. So tonight I'm going to be presenting to you from our Us and Lupus, Living with Lupus uh, series. And I'm gonna talk specifically about sun safety because Memorial Day weekend is coming up. We're going into the summertime now. And these are the times that we especially need to be conscious of our exposure to the sun. Uh, although year round, you can get that exposure. So we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, I'd like to uh, share with you guys that I just encourage you to be what we refer to as an engaged patient. And what I mean by being engaged is for you to be empowered to be in control of what's happening to you um, so that you are informed, something that you're doing tonight, being more informed about sun safety and that you can protect yourself. Uh, when we talk about being an engaged patient tonight, I'm going to talk about you taking ownership of your health and your lifestyle. And so we're going to jump right in talking about lifestyle and we're gonna talk about sun safety. And one of the things that I need you to remember is you need to always be conscious of protecting yourself from being exposed to the sun because it's an essential part of you managing your lupus. When we talk about photosensitivity, that simply means you have an unusual sensitivity to the sun. Um, and you know, with Climate change and some of the things that we're experiencing now, it, seem, it seems like we are more sensitive to the, sun, to the sun than we have been in previous years. And that's just across the board, not even in relationship if you have a diagnosis such as lupus. The best rule of thumb to remember when it comes to sun safety, if you can avoid being out in the sun in the middle of the day, midday, or you can avoid tropical sunlight in, if you don't live in Florida or uh, South Alabama, like Orange Beach or somewhere real nice and pleasurable, such as that. If you can avoid uh, being in the sun during the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., you will protect yourself a little more from that sun safety. And just remember that your, your photosensitivity can trigger you to have a flare or it can trigger you having symptoms such as a rash or itching or even just a, a sunburn can trigger you in, uh, going into a full-blown lupus flare. So when we talk about radiation, the ultraviolet radiation rays, there's three. There's uh, UVA, B, and C. So today I'm going to talk to you about UVA and UVB. UVA is the one that causes us to wrinkle. And so you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself uh, so that we can keep our young looking faces and skin, beautiful skin. And then also UV, UVB. And if you want to remember the B and it stands for burning. UVB is what causes your sunburn, your burning of your skin. And so no matter what complexion you are, you need to protect yourself from those ultraviolet rays. Um, when I think about protecting yourself, one of the things that you wanna to remember too is they actually have uh, clothing that is out now that you can protect yourself. And one of the things that you want to remember is to wear either dark clothing or tightly woven clothing, clothing because um, those are able to help those ultraviolet rays from penetrating all the way to your uh, reaching your skin. If you have on light clothing, the sun often can penetrate it. And if you keep in mind too, some polyesters and silks 
have a reflective sheen on them and that reflects the ultraviolet rays away from your skin also. So that's another um, a thing that you can remember when you're choosing your clothing and you know you're gonna be out in the sun. Uh, we have high tech clothing now that is called sun protective clothing. And those have a rating to it. And what I wanna remind you of, if you have an ultraviolet protection factor on the clothing that you get in that sun protective clothing, you want that UPF, ultraviolet protective uh, protection factor to be anywhere uh, a, as high as 25 or up. So 25 to 50, and if you can find some that's even higher than 50, with a UPF higher than 50, those are great for protecting you against the sun. So, and I'm saying that real slow intentionally because we have so many acronyms that we use. Uh, and so I wanna make sure that you get that one. And I'll just say it one more time. UPF is ultraviolet protection factor. And that's what you want it to be 25 to 50, or if you can find it even higher, uh, when you're picking your clothing. Remember when you are wearing ultraviolet protective clothing too, you wanna be conscious of how you're washing and caring for that clothing. If it gets stretched out, it's not gonna uh, provide the protection that it originally did uh, for you because the fibers are no longer tightly woven. And also you wanna keep in mind with it too, if you're using a lot and overuse, it'll start to break down too and it won't provide that protection. So keep that in mind. Then, you know, the next thing that you hear about is SPF, sun protection factor, SPF. And that's what's in your sunscreen. You want to know what SPF uh, level it is. And with sunscreen, you want an SPF of 30 or more. That's the protectant level. What do you want to remember about sunscreen is you want to apply sunscreen at least 20 minutes before you're gonna be out in the sun. So you wanna apply it and you wanna make sure that you apply it liberally. In other words, lather up ladies and gentlemen, if there's any here, but put it on and put it on good because you wanna make sure that you're covering yourself well. If you just put on a thin layer, you're not really protecting yourself very well. And you want to remember those are, there's some areas that we often, overlook or we don't do a good job of applying it. One of those places is the middle of your back. You need to get someone to help you to make sure you're covering the middle of your back. Sometimes we don't really get it good on the sides of our neck. We don't cover it good on our temples and we don't cover it good on our ears, especially our ears. So you want to make sure in some of those key places that we overlook when applying sunscreen that we're applying it. Also, you want to remember to reapply your sunscreen every, if you're in the sun more than two hours, two to three hours, you want to remember to reapply, okay? So we'll, sometimes we forget that, we put it on in the morning. And if you're in, actually in the water swimming, you may even want to reapply it more frequently than that because you want to make sure that it's not washed off or it's breaking down if you're sitting out in the sun for a long period of time. And again, a big part of that is being liberal with it. Don't be bashful, apply plenty of it. Sometimes people get the misconception that because the sun is not shining, that you are you don't need that sunscreen or you're not getting much exposure, but in fact you are. So I want you to remember that even though it may be a cloudy day out, overcast day out, if you're gonna be out in the sun all day, still apply your sunscreen because there are ultraviolet rays that are penetrating and that are getting through to you. Uh, I talked about limiting your time out in the sun. I've talked about clothing. Uh, the other thing that I wanna talk to you about is phototoxicity. And what I mean by phototoxicity is the reaction you, the chemical reaction you may have with certain medications that you're on. So you might wanna talk with your physician about if you're on a diuretic, uh, some antibiotics that you might be on, even if you are diabetic and you have some diabetic medications that you've been on and some heart medications, all of these um, 
may cause a chemical reaction to for you when you're out in the sun. So uh, I'm not going to do specifics about which medications are or cause phototoxicity, but that's something that you want to keep top of mind. I will give you a general class of them. Again, it's antibiotics. Uh, heart, some heart medications can cause it. Some oral diabetic medications can cause the photosensitivity, uh, photosensitivity. And one of the things that I didn't mention was non-inflammatory uh, uh, medications, or we say no sense is what they're called, uh, non-inflammatory, uh, non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory medications uh, is what I'm, I should be saying as I'm getting tongue-tied. Okay, so uh, in addition to Photosensitivity, I've talked about ultraviolet rays, I've talked about sunscreens, I just finished talking to you about medications, and the last thing is mm, ultraviolet uh, rays that you get from fluorescent lights or halogen lights. So when you're inside, you can still get exposure uh, to your uh, skin that's not good for you, so you want to be conscious of the lighting that you're being exposed to when you're in buildings, it's a, a good time that you still may want to have on a long sleeve to keep the lights, the rays from the lights to penetrate and causing harm uh, to you. And so those are the big things that I want to share to you about being sun safe today. Uh, I want you guys to get your phones out because I'm going to take you if you get your phone out and bring your camera up, I want you to choose uh, the first QR code here on your left that says learn more about symptom tracking. And we're going to go over to the Us and Lupus webpage. I see a couple of phones up on the screen. So I'll leave it up just a moment so people can go over to the Us and Lupus webpage. Ms. Karen, did you get it? Because it looks like your camera is off. Okay. And so, and I didn't say, but most people have that app that'll pop, that'll cause it to pop up. So it should take you straight to the Us and Lupus webpage. And I'm going to jump over there if you give me just a moment. Wow, we had more people to join. That's great, Tracy. So let me hit the share. But mm, this is where I get confused. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. No worries. Let's see. I think I can get to it. Here we go. Can you see the Us and Lupus webpage? Yes. I'm getting better at this Zoom thing after a year, Tracy. <laughs> I know, right? But me too. <laughs> So this is the usandlupus.com webpage that I had you guys to use your camera to take you straight to, and it should have taken you straight right here to symptoms. And it should have shown you some of the symptoms that come up. And what I just finished talking to you about was sun safety. And did I pass? Where did I? Did I go in the wrong category? Let me see here. There we go, I was in the wrong category. So it should have taken you here to living with lupus and over here to the sun safety. And I'm not gonna go through the details here, but I encourage you to look through this, just review some of the information here. This is a quote for one of our lupus warriors that came to this webpage. And it just talks about the importance of protecting yourself from the sun importance of wearing sunscreen, some of the things, even talks about vitamin D, which I didn't cover, but that's some of the information there. And so I'm going to flip back. I think, I don't know what I'm seeing here. Just give me a moment. Cute sunglasses is what we're seeing. Yeah. <laughs> and so, thank you. Do you see the thank you now? I do. All right. So that was my short and sweet sun safety presentation that I wanted to share with you guys. I see Tracy's getting out her big floppy hat. 
I want to show y'all my cute hat that um, I actually got this at Costco and uh, I, it was last year, but see it, it even has this to put on your head. It even protects my shoulders a little bit because uh, some of you know this because you've heard me complain about it. I have a really old convertible and it's broken so that the top won't go up. And even if the top would go up, the air conditioner is broken. So pretty much if I'm going to drive in the summer, I need to be really covered. So I have found some, um, some shirts at actually I got them from Amazon that have like SPF 50. They're long sleeve, but they're wicking. So they're really good to wear in the car. And then with my hat and my sunglasses, you know, I, I think we all just reach a point where we realize that our safety is more important than how we look, but I just like to envision myself as one of those cool old ladies in the movies that wears her big hat or big sunglasses. So, yeah. And lots so, of sunscreen. So Tracy, I'm seeing some messages here in yeah. the chat box and it says, it's so hard since I work at a school, recess time is right in the bad part. Yeah, that's a challenge. So you got to make sure you have a floppy hat. If you have on long sleeves, that'll help you with that. Um, and then when it comes to the C version, I really didn't do my homework a lot on C because I focused on uh, A and B because I know that was more. So the question about the C version of ultraviolet rays, I would have to do a little homework on. Well, I, think, uh, I think Mary Jo is right. It's man-made. When you see the little uh, devices that you can get to sanitize your phone with UV rays, it, it's that kind. Okay. So it's not something we're going to get from the sun. Okay. All right. See, I learned something, as I always do from you. Uh, and then okay. that's a great thing. Only because so, I'm a fast Googler. So Brooke says, uh, can you wear a hat with an SPF long sleeve shirt? over your clothing while out at recess. That's a great idea. Uh, let's see, Judith says, Judith, I can wear a hat and do wear my sunscreen. I struggle a lot with heat. Yeah, and has been 85, 90 the last few days. So yeah, it makes sunscreen, uh, long sleeves hard to wear. Um, but yeah, that, that's a challenge. And then another one says I wear sun clothing and hats in Thailand, and it gets to 100. Wow, it's worth it, but not, not to get a flare. Yeah, understand that one. And since summer comes, my left lower leg is always tight and stiff, even in early morning. So are you relating that to the changes in the weather, the heat, or direct sun? I think that's from Jessica. Uh, yes, it's from me. Yes. My lower so, back, my lower leg is always tight and a little bit swollen. I checked, I have a very thorough heart uh, checked ultrasound uh, stress test. And they all said my, my heart is very, very good. Good. But when I drink too much water or sit more than an hour, I, my legs, especially my right legs is very tight. And uh, since the morning come, my legs, I, I barely can move in the morning. Mm. Even, in, even in the morning, the whole, throughout the whole day, especially when I wake up or in uh, late evening. So mm. I don't know whether it's related to the summer, to the sun or not. I don't have that in the winter. Mm -hmm. And it could be related to the heat more than the sun. Uh-huh. Yeah, it could possibly be. Not sure. Yeah. Uh, I still have questions. Why? Did, what caused this? Yeah. Yeah. So when you've addressed it with your physician, have you gotten any helpful information? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, they checked my stomach and checked my uh, heart, but I did not have my kidney checked. My blood, blood work comes out very good. Cholesterol, uh, 
blood, uh, blood oil, everything is very perfect. Mm -hmm. But are they looking at the studies like protein in your kidneys? How well your kidney? Are they checking? No. Yes. So that nothing. Nothing. Well, that's a blessing. Uh -huh. Does your shoe feel tight? No, I wear very loose shoe. Okay. All Any right. shoe I wear. It, it does it does, does your ankle look swollen like it's edema? No, I everything's normal, but just mat, tight. Tight. Yes, I can I like six seventies, uh, eighties. Yeah. Huh. So so this is not happening to all you lupus no. patients. Mm -mm. Uh, well, maybe she might be having a fluid situation because mm -hmm. uh -huh. it will make you congested. So, mm -hmm. You know, the, you know, and they may need to try to check it, or you might be drinking too much fluid too. Okay. So you want to talk, you need to talk to your doctor. Even though they said your kidneys are okay, you might want them to try to do a different test. Okay. So should just, I, talk? I have some of those same um, situations with water yep. but in tightness in legs, but it's all kidney related. So that's why I ask, make sure you have them double check your kidneys again. Anything with yeah. water retention for me is kidney, kidney related. So should I talk to my family doctor or my lupus doctor? You need to talk to a kidney lupus doctor. doctor. Uh, kidney doctor. If you don't, if you don't already have a nephrologist on your team, talk to your rheumatologist. Okay. Yeah, your rheumatologist okay. can direct you to a nephrologist. Thank you. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to somebody who was just on screen, uh, Tisa Beard, and she's going to kill me for doing this, but uh, if You're you okay. saw her newsletter last week. She was our uh, survivor that we featured in her own words, and she's been one of our uh, support group facilitators here in the middle Tennessee area for a long time. And I think this is your first call on Tuesday nights, isn't it, T? Yes. Um, usually by this time when I was working, I'm usually bummed out by six o'clock. So that's usually a quick nap time. So. I have very good intentions of wanting to get on, but I just made a special effort today I'm so to glad. make sure that I napped a little early so that I could log in. Um, as Tracy mentioned, I really appreciate the write-up and the uh, article that was that showcased me last week. Um, it was really touching, but I am a lupus warrior and I have been for almost four, 24 years. I was diagnosed in 1997 and um, the past three years have been the most challenging for me out of all. So um, I've struggled with um, working full time outside the home for many, many, many years, all my life. And I was just um, approved for medical disability. So, this is a new journey for me. I've only been out for like three weeks and I'm about to go stir crazy because I don't quite know what to do with myself, but I'm learning. Every day I try to do a little project here and there, but um, it's just something to get adjusted to, but I'll get there sooner than later or I'm going to get put out my house because my husband fusses at me. <laughs> I don't believe a word of that. Yeah, get somewhere and sit down. But uh, I am married. Um, I have one son who's Tracy's uh, adopted son. Yes, he is. Um, he's 19. He's uh, just finished his freshman year of college at UT. And um, so, yes, it's just been, it seemed like one escapade after the other as far as my lupus is concerned. It's been very active the past three years. So, um, I'm just trying some new things, trying to sit back and relax and enjoy life a little bit. But yeah, so my Tracy has my contact, my email information. I'll put it um, also down in the chat. I do um, facilitate a support group in Smyrna. Uh, we meet at the uh, Stonecrest Medical Center, usually on the third Tuesday of every month, but we hadn't been able to meet there because of COVID. So um, they are 
I think this summer I'm going to start, you know, releasing some of the tight knitness. Um, and I can understand why, because it is at a hospital and things like that. So I'll keep Tracy updated on when we will resume. But I, like I said, I'll leave my email in the chat if you all have any questions or uh, concerns or whatever you need to know about me. I'm not shy whatsoever about it. Um, I want to tell my story. I, want, I think people need to know so that they can um, be more aware, uh, just as Jessica mentioned about, you know, the leg issue. It just may be her, true enough, it could be a kidney issue or it may just be a way that a lupus is attacking her body. But it's always good to share those things because you don't ever know who else may be um, experiencing some of those same issues. Right. So it's good to see everybody. I pray everybody's doing well and hang in there. It is get ready to get kind of hot. Oh, yeah. So make sure you do um, protect yourself with your clothing and your sunscreen. I just put it on um, in the spring, summer, fall, winter, anytime, just because I don't ever know. I normally don't do as well in the winter with cold months. So um, those little tidbit, um, little helpful hints really do make a difference. You might not be able to tell one way or the other at times, but it does, you know, tend to help everybody. So hang in there, you know, be strong lupus warriors and your families, get you some great support groups and um, a support system to be able to stand in the gap for you because there are times when you, you're flatlined <laughs> and can't you know, do as much, but you know all of that seems to really help. So I prayerfully I can get on more now that yeah. you know that it give me something else to do. <laughs> well, you know, you know me, I'll fill up your time. I know you will. That's fine. <laughs> well, thank thank you for letting me uh, you know jump in and and put you on the spot. So thank. Oh you. no, you're fine. There's no worries. I'm I'm not shy. You you I, know that I, by now. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, submitted my email address. If anybody. Awesome. Needs to, you know, reach out. So thank you for doing You're that. You're welcome. And Tracy can always contact me if I need can. be or whatever. Awesome. Well, uh, Chris has posted on here that uh, that they're having some of the same problems. Chris, do you want to fill us in some of the same problems as Jessica's leg? Oh. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm from uh, and I'm having some of the same problems and I have a nephrologist, I have a neurologist, I have my primary care, I have my rheumatologist. My problem lately is um, my left leg, my shin area is really tight. And when I stand up, put pressure on it, it hurts so bad, especially in the morning. And if I go walking, my left thigh up in the groin area hurts really bad. I did talk with my neurologist yesterday. He sent me for some lab work and I do have kidney problems. I'm stage three, four. I'm afraid about going to number five stage mm. and I have a lot of issues. I have a very supportive son I don't know if he's on here or not, but he was the one that told me about this group. Mm. And um, it's very painful. So I know what she's going through. I mean, no, I don't really know what she's going through. I think I know what she's going through because it's similar to mine with the tightness. But they said some of my kidney blood work, lab work was really bad. Some of the other work was good. It's not showing that I'm in an active lupus flare, but it's showing that I had a lupus player recently, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel like I was having one. Um, I get tired easy now. Mm -hmm. And when a young lady said that she had to um, come out on disability, I used to work for social security until last year and I retired on disability and it was really, really hard for me to get disability, but thank God I was able to retire and um, I just like to stay connected with people that's um, either a lupus 
patient, a lupus warrior, a lupus survivor, or have family members. So like I said, my family is very supportive. They're there for me. And I really appreciate my son, but I don't know how to, he got connected with Tracy, but I'm glad that he did. And I wasn't prepared to show my face today. So that's why I don't have a video. It's not that I'm shy. Well, so I will be know, don't feel bad. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what you look like, you're beautiful to us. So don't don't worry about uh, about showing your face because we're going to think you're lovely no matter what. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, Chris, and yeah. and, we're, and you know we're we're here for you, and um, yeah. you know that we've had I think some really great connections come mm -hmm. out of this group of people uh, connecting with one another offline, outside of the the Tuesday meetings that um, you know we, we've become a real support system for one another. Mm -hmm. So uh, please, please come back every week. Mm -hmm. And invite your son. <laughs> no. What's your uh, son's name? His name is Kenneth Frierson. I remember talking to him. Yes. Yeah. He's always talking about me and my lupus. <laughs> well, that's a good boy. I want to share you. one thing with you all. Sure. With the, um, because I was in, the, in denial when I first got on dialysis. But believe it or not, since I've been on dialysis, I haven't been swallowing anymore, and I don't have to take as much medication as I was taking, and I feel much better because it's cleansing my blood, so I don't know if that's something that's a good thing for us or not, but I feel a lot better than I did uh, even for the last few years, and so I, you know, I, I'm just clapping my hands, so don't be afraid, just do what you got to do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, guys, we have got um, Maya on the call who is newly diagnosed and would like to introduce herself and, and kind of pick our brains uh, for some support to her as an, a newly diagnosed person. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, Maya. Hi. 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 This is for beautiful meeting. <laughs> Um, I was diagnosed two years ago. I'm 18, uh, about to graduate in a few weeks, and I'm going to be starting community college because I did not want to take that alone. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure the best route to communicate with my teachers, mm -hmm. and it was a struggle for me um, because they were looking at me since freshman year um, about what I might be, what I might have, but I wasn't officially diagnosed until my junior year. However, I'm mm -hmm. not sure with my teachers if I have problems because I am very tired a lot and I have a lot of doctor appointments, but I don't want it to affect my studies. But I so I don't know if I would consider my diagnosed uh, disability or not. So mm. I'm not sure about it. Well, where are you um, I not? would, Maya, this is uh, T again. You know, your your health issues are confidentiality to the school as far as like the HIPAA um, information is concerned. And um, I think that you should reach out to your teachers because there may be some things that may be expected of you to do uh, or partake in some type of uh, group studies or lessons that you may not be well enough at times to complete those um, tasks. And I just think it would probably shed some light of uh, compassion from them on situations like that. But if they don't know, they won't be able to help you. Um, so I would just email them. You have that right, you know, to communicate with them, um, to let them know that, you know, you do have, um, uh, autoimmune disease, which, you know, you could have any, all kinds of symptoms at any given time. It's no rhyme or reason per se. And that will probably help eliminate some of the stressors, which, you know, can cause you to, you know, be really sick and have, you know, bad players. Um, it can be just something very general, 
I mean, you might not have to go into all the details in regards to what may be going on with you, but especially the fatigue, um, that, because it is one of the most common symptoms of lupus. Um, I would share that with them just to let them know. Thank you. You're more than welcome. And if you need help, like, <clears throat> excuse me, configuring, um, or just a generalized email or whatnot, I could help you with that. You could email me at any time or if you needed to. Sure, and you, you're welcome, Maya, to, to refer them uh, to me and I can send some information. But Maya's in Memphis and Southwest Community College, you know, that, that could be a great opportunity for us to connect with them. I know that, um, you know, that, the person most likely, there's usually somebody that's in charge of student health, that, and that's the person most likely to get that conversation. And especially in Memphis, you are probably not going to be the first person that they've dealt with, with lupus, and with uh, what we've just been through the last year with some students uh, working virtually sometimes because of COVID. It, it is a really good time to to be in school with a disability because there are um, accommodations available that, that maybe were not in the past. Yes, ma'am. I'll be sure to get together uh, to create a letter. I tried to do it when I was in high school with my teachers, but it wasn't what it, I would have expected it to be. It wasn't as helpful. They would say, oh, okay, you can just submit it the next day. It may not be good the next day. Is it possible if I can do the weekend? Yeah. So communication, it wasn't the best. And I don't want to add more stress it being my freshman year in college. So I just want to be sure I have everything in place before going in. Sure. Well, uh, Miss Dorothy is from Memphis. Marika is across the state line. Are you in, are you in Arkansas or Mississippi? No, I'm in Memphis. Yeah, I saw that she's oh, in Marika. Memphis. I'll, I'll try to get in touch with you. Yeah, Marika, where are you? Olive Branch, Mississippi. Okay, I was going to say, if you're in Arkansas, we can't get to you. So, <laughs> because of the bridge. <laughs> awesome. So, you've got some folks on here uh, willing to, to lend you some support. And uh, do you have other lupus uh, patients that you connect with in Memphis? Yes, uh, I recently started a support group, um, and it's for youth. It's on Snapchat, and Fantastic. I created a TikTok page that advocates for lupus. I've gained a lot of followers so far, and I'm hoping to continue that. So oh. I've been create a support group from it. But most of us are youth, and we deal with problems like our family is not understanding, and we just wanted to be able to have youth understand what you know each other so i've been able to communicate with them but most of us are all everywhere we have someone in washington we have someone in las vegas we have someone in mexico so we're trying to like really get out there that's fantastic. well i'd like to get with you to uh just to help you here in memphis that's as awesome. far as the youth because i had been thinking about the young younger people too but i hadn't been hearing anything from the youth yeah. Yes, I would love that. Uh, we love it. We have one member who's had it. She lives in London and she's had it for about 20 years. And we go to her for a lot of questions that we have um, as far as like medications. Mm -hmm. And it's good to be able to communicate with someone who's had it longer. I haven't met anybody who's had it for a long time except for I've her. had it for over 50 years. <laughs> so yes, I'd be more than happy too. to talk to you. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you my email or do you want my phone number or? Yes, ma'am, I'll take it. Well, what's Maya, you, uh, please feel free to share this uh, information about our sessions on Tuesday nights and our chapter with everyone else too, because we're we're happy to to have have everybody. And I just sent you my email address. I'd love to check out your uh, your uh, your Snapchat and everything. Yes, ma'am, will do. Awesome. All right, who else is on here? Let's see. I saw another 
Uh, Tracy, I have a question before you yes, carry on. Uh, does anyone have um, problems with their hands and their, <clears throat> and their feet becoming like drawn? Yes. I, I yes. Really yes. 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 Stenosis. Um, that is what really has, um, yes, um, hindered me with for work. Because I, I'm an accountant and so I type all day. All I do is type numbers. But I have to explain where the numbers come from. And so typing has become very challenging for me because I can't, you know, yeah. hold my right. feet. Yeah. So um, you know, I get so frustrated with it though. Cause it I could see it starting a couple of years ago, but you know, I've always just been so carefree and lax the days to just do whatever I want to do but just certain things like I don't have a lot of strength in my hands anymore so opening up doors doorknobs um jars I threw a pickle jar across the wall last week uh, just because I couldn't open it but yeah <laughs> so it just gets frustrating in that sense but I try to hang in there. Uh, there are these little, I call them gizmos that you can use and it's really helpful to open jars. Uh, I think you probably can get it at Walmart. Yeah, we, I've gotten a couple of gadgets off of Amazon. It's uh, for the uh, ergonomic issues you know right so that has helped a lot but when you don't have those things you don't think about it you know what i'm saying right so mm -hmm. and they can still be difficult to use uh it's better than twisting with your your hand and your oh, life yes, of strength uh -huh. but it's you know you have to get that technique down to make that little gizmo work or i do but what i tend to do uh when it's really, really tight and I have a gas stove, I will take the jar and put the lid like where the pallet is and let it get warm. And something about that getting warm make it easier to open, oh. turn it upside down. And uh, I just came in from the doctor this last few months. I thought I got through COVID real good and didn't get a, even get a sinus infection. So in the last month, I've had, um, the doctor has been treating me for uveitis since 2017. And my right eye started to protrude. I uh, had a CT scan. My eye drops were increased. The following week, I had to follow up with the heart doctor. So I'm having some inflammation in the aortic and the following week after that I tested positive for H. pylori. So that's a bunch of medicine. And then today when I saw the rheumatologist, I'm now I'm going to start five milligrams of prednisone to um, try and pull me through all this inflammation and the flares that keep popping up and as far as somebody said something about your feet hurting there are certain areas of my feet that hurt and just this past year I started developing calluses and it's only on my left foot thank the lord and it's not on both of them but they can be um, very irritating and painful but my foot itself I should say feet hurt like on the side of my feet, uh, they just feel real tender. It's almost like I don't have any padding. And there's really nothing that, you know, except for to pamper myself with the foot bath. And that brings me some relief. So I have that. That's how my lupus was diagnosed. And really? what they it is. I have a brace on my left foot and my left foot is like yours. I get the same, I have the same problem. I have a brace on my left foot that lifts it up from the sole of my shoe. 
right. and that gives and that is what gave me uh, some relief from my pain and my throat. So go to well, your have... go to a, a foot doctor, to a podiatrist, and see right okay. what he can do. Jo has has got a, a gizmo that she wants to show us for um, jar opening. Yes, this is for jar opening. So this actually opens up and you wrap it around the jar. And then it, I'm sure you've heard the saying, if you give me a lever large, long enough, I can move the world. This gives you a lever so that you're not just on top of it. It gives you a little distance and it's easier to open. That's neat. Cool. I also <laughs> use this. Now this, okay, has a little lip on it. So you put it on the jar and you lift it a little bit you can do that, it does the same thing as someone else was doing with the um, heat. You can hear it pop. And that lets that releases the vacuum seal and it will be easier to open. So what do you use for a cat to use it to open a can? I have a problem with the can openers. You know, the oh, hand yeah. can. Okay, hold on a second, because I have to go get them. <laughs> okay, so while, while you're doing that, Who's got another sun safety question for Alicia? <laughs> Are you still on there, Alicia? So I use an OXO can opener because it's padded and has a very large grip and a large handle. So that is, you know, okay. that's a grab. And I can Because I always have to ask somebody to open the can for me. That, that'll say. It, right because it took away my independence <laughs> right because this is it gives you a nice big handle i found that i can do a lot more things if the handle is large enough it's that my hand can't grip or has a hard time gripping things that are small and then i found this and this is for when you have those cans that have the ring top you lift the yeah. ring and pull it okay so you push this underneath the ring and then you just push this down and the top comes right off. Wow. <laughs> I'm all about the gadget because I'm home by myself so often and I can't open anything. Yeah. So if my son or my husband are home, they can take care of it for me. But if I'm by myself, I'm stuck. And this will even open like a water bottle. So if you got a bottle, you've got a bottle of water, it you can put that on and it comes right open. Because it gives you a big lever. Yeah. Do you have a link to that, to where you got that? Or is it like a Walmart thing? Or I think it was a Walmart thing. Okay. I ordered mine off of Amazon. And it comes yeah, like and it the might white be an Amazon it... thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Handy Gourmet. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, Jessica's got a question about sun safety. Uh, should we wear dark colors? Just to double confirm. How about bright colors? Alicia, are you with us? Uh-oh. <laughs> she ran away. I yeah, I think she did it. <laughs> I think she's on there. Uh, what she, well, she said dark colors. Yeah, Jessica, she said dark colors and uh, things that are tightly woven. Tightly woven. And things that have kind of a shine to them. So I know she said dark like colors, me. but I mean, I've got, this is from Cooley Bar and it's white. Ah. But it's from Cooley Bar, so it has the, the, um, the sunscreen stuff in it. It even has a little hood and the long sleeves. Yeah. I actually can take this. I store one in my car. Oh, that's so great. If I go somewhere and I have short sleeves on and then somehow we end up outside, which as we know happens so often, yeah. I can put this on to protect. I don't have to worry about the sunscreen because all of a sudden we're outside rather than we plan to be outside. And I can put that on and then take it off when I go back in. Oh, okay. But it's white, but it's from yeah. Holy Bar, yeah. so I have to yeah. imagine they knew what they were doing when they yeah. made it. Especially and it goes with everything. Yeah. yeah, it meets the criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabrina, are you still on with us? We may have lost, I think it was Sabrina's first time too. I'm here. There you are, is it your first time? No, this is Alicia. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> uh, we were asking about bright colors. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. Can you tell me? Yeah, if uh, uh, you said to wear dark colors, but how about bright colors? Bright colors, it'll penetrate. It's like light colors, and unless it has like some kind of reflective sheen. Okay, or yeah. unless it's got the stuff in it, like a coolie bar. Right. Okay, all right, gotcha. And mm -hmm. then we've got, uh, let's see, Kara says, uh, stay in the sun all the time and has not had a reaction or flare from it. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good. So is it okay to keep spending time in the sun if you're not having a reaction from it? Well, we know that lupus is a unique and individual <laughs> disease. And so, if, but the sun we know is not good to spend lots of time in it. And so I would definitely consider doing that in moderation. Uh, making sure again that you have on sunscreen and protecting yourself but you know uh, that's probably going to be more of an individual call than one that I would I would take a position on to say yes I wouldn't I wouldn't say <laughs> you know bask in the sun for sure so, so knowing that a lot of others do have reactions then possibly mm -hmm. just be on that on the alert Kara. Mm -hmm. For, for that. Uh, and now let's see, Carla has asked which sunscreen ingredients provide the best protection, which ties into Jessica asking for a recommendation on sunscreen. Yeah, and I, I would not make a recommendation uh, as far as particular brand of sunscreen, but what I would say again is the SPF or greater is what you want. You want to make sure also you might want to get the hyperallergenic one because you already have sensitivity as far as your skin. If you, if you have a history of having the butterfly rash or any kind of rash, so you want to be uh, conscious of a hyperallergenic uh, sunscreen also. Uh, what about red and blue LED light? Yeah, I saw that one pop up and I'm not really sure about that one, Tracy. Uh, I would just say that it possibly still has some ultraviolet to it, but I don't know. Okay. I haven't seen that question before. Um, I, I will I will tell you guys, some of the, the sunscreens, especially on your face, the smells really bother me. So uh, look for things that, uh, that say that they're unscented because um, that is kind of a, for me, that's something that really bothers my, my face and my nose. And if, if I'm bothered by it in any way, I'm not going to mm -hmm. use it. I got something recently that kind of sits on top of the skin, but I had a gift card from Sephora. So I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I don't know whether I'll ever buy it again for myself because it was expensive, but I really like it. <laughs> but, um, or if you get something made for the face, Oils Olay has a nice one that's made for the face. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Really All right, uh, Judah. Yes, I have never been able to wear sunscreen. Mm -hmm. I'm allergic to almost all of them, but my dermatologist uh, recommended Elta MD. Um, it's particularly good if you're t you tend to have acne or rosacea. Okay. Um, or she said it probably would work even if you were starting to get a lupus mask flare. Um, so I've been using it. It's SPF 50. It comes in many forms. I use the form most often that looks like your foundation and a little squirt bottle and it goes on. It feels good. I don't remember if it has a scent or not now that you mentioned it. I don't remember being annoyed by a scent and I'm usually pretty sensitive to scents. So I find it, um, I find it very effective and I've been able to use it for the first time. And when we were talking about sunscreen behavior, the places that I've had the most skin cancer removed um, is my chest because of the sunlight coming in the car when I had a V-neck on and this side of my face and this side of my face next to my eyes. 
because I do a real good job here, but not here, and the sun comes in from the side. Mm -hmm. So the last um, sunscreen, uh, the last surgery I had was all above, in, and be below my eyebrow. And she said that's directly related to riding as a passenger in the car. Since I haven't been able to ride, drive the last year, my husband's driving. So that's why I'm wearing a hat all the time in the car. I can flip it down um, if the sun's coming in and I can't block it. Um, so just remember those funny places, like you said, ears. Um, but just remember the funny places that you don't think about. Okay. There's, um, that makes sense. So if, if anyone, I, I dropped in the, uh, the one that, that Judith had talked about, and there's also one called Sunblock 60 that, um, let me see if I can find that one real quick, that my, um, I have a neighbor with some kind of skin condition, and that's something that that should be on Amazon. Okay, uh, how to take care of and entertain kids in the summer as a lupus mom. <laughs> Anybody want to take that one? I try to find shade for me to be in if I'm entertaining my goddaughter. She's almost six. So I'll be, um, I'll be in the shade like near the house or something while well, she's out running around crazy. Hey, Beth has got, Beth and uh, Casper have the Elta. There we go. <laughs> so, so that's a good one. Uh, Jessica, are you having reactions to the sun or you have you done okay? Very bad. Really? In the, in the winter, I feel I have no lupus. I doubt I whether I have lupus a lot. I don't have any finis. And then since April, totally changed. Mm. Mm. So how to take care of kids? He, he, I cannot lock him in the house. No, that's true. And you've got a redheaded child, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Who's probably that yes. great with the sun too. <laughs> yeah, we should hide from the sun. He, and he also said he does not like sun. But he need to he needs sports. So any advice? What about experience? a sun umbrella? What about a sun on um, like a a sun a parasol? Yeah. You know, so that you could be outside but you've created your own shade. Okay, I saw that. So you yeah, wear they... that. You wear no, that. You it's hold like... it. Well, and I'm sure they, they make hats that have that, but a parasol is like an umbrella, but it has the SPF in the material that is part of the umbrella. So the... And there are some actual umbrellas that have an SPF right. added to them also. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Exactly. And also Academy Sports have the folding chairs with the lid that goes over it. Right. Right. You I have a saying? chair that has a, um, my, I have an umbrella that's attached to my chair. It's oh, okay. a one that does that. Oh, okay. Well, that would, that would probably, that would probably help Jessica. Okay. There, there the are, right. y'all know the pop-up tents like you get for tailgating or that we have at our lupus walks. You can get those that the cover, the canopy has SPF in it. Okay. Cool. Bill. Right. Umbrella. Okay. It's just not, but nobody have an umbrella. If I have an umbrella, who cares? At the playground. That means you're an original. Yeah. <laughs> Big hat. And when I take her to the park or anything, I try to stay near the trees or get underneath the pavilion or something whenever I'm not running around with her on the playground. Okay. It's hard, Jessica. That's really hard. Yes. And he's four and a half. He's a boy, very, very energetic, very active. But you will learn different ways, Jessica, that work for you. You know what I'm saying? You just have to try certain different things like the umbrella, like the chair with the lid over it. Um, the, the things that will help suit you best. You can't always, and I know it's hard, you know, to kind of just be different, but 
you have to do that to protect yourself. And who's to say somebody probably will ask you, where did you get that umbrella from? Or where did you get that chair from? Because they probably need one too. You're right. <laughs> well, and and sometimes it, it gives other people a feeling of confidence that they can do it too. It's like, exactly. if, I don't, if yeah. I don't care how stupid I look in my hat, then- Oh, it's cute. You know, well, yeah, but at least you won't be sick tomorrow, tomorrow with a lupus flare, you know? But, uh, yeah, That's it's it whatever, exactly. whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you something for me is, I, and do you guys I have like the church news? My face doesn't sweat. So it just gets red. Does anyone else have that? So I carry water, with, like my water bottle, I'm constantly splashing water on my face to cool it I'm off. holding the bottle against my face. Yes. Because it's so red. The misting fan is nice too, if you can get one of those small ones. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. They're good. They're like about this big maybe. Yeah. With a little okay. fan on them. Different colors from Walmart. That's a really good idea. I, I have so much I carry with me when I go walking. I feel like I'm ready to transition to a backpack. <laughs> but um, all of you folks talking about um, your hand dexterity yes. and needing to do stuff to to flex your hands. Who knows what this is? It's a crochet hook. Who knows how to crochet? Does it help? I knit your... better. Huh? But I knit better. You knit better? So yeah. who who um who would be interested in learning to crochet? Because it's great, great, great for dexterity. Because I can throw that in later down the road. My hands start to hurt after a while or anything. I used to help my mom crochet rugs. Oh yeah. That's why I, a snowflake is just the right amount of time. Or a granny or spray. a pot holder. So a pot holder, I, <laughs> something or a dishcloth, something yeah. small. So if you guys want to do that later on, we will. All right, who's got any more questions for Alicia? Uh, so, uh, are you still on there, Alicia? I am here. Yes, guys. She is with us almost every Tuesday night. And she covers half the country and is doing this with other chapters and other lupus and arthritis organizations. So uh, I, I think she really likes this is one of the reasons that she gives us a lot of time. But she's also very dedicated to, um, to helping lupus patients with everything. And she's out on her wall. Yay. <laughs> I'm so, outside. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it's it looks like the perfect time of day to, to be outside. So, uh, so that's great. Thank you, Alicia, for uh, for your great presentation.